Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you for letting me know uh, that. Um, okay, guys. Um, today we're going to continue. Um, if you remember, I left an activity. Um, it was this past Friday. It was about podcast. I don't know if any of you listened to podcast yesterday. The ones that didn't work on that activity. Do you listen to any podcasts? Hello. Remember that, um, well, I left that activity in order to, uh, to practice English, but I don't know if any of you um, listen to podcasts. Anyone who wants to participate? Because I want to start with that activity, but if not, uh, we're going to move um, to the exercise and also the um, topic that we're going to be discussing uh, for tonight's class. And it's going to be in the platform of Inglés Corporativo. So, um, anyone? Okay, I, I guess. Uh, Hi. Hi. Hi, Alicia. Okay, do you listen uh, to Yesterday I listened to mm -hmm. my podcast, but mm -hmm. I don't finish it. My you podcast. Finish, but you can tell us uh, uh, about. Um, you can tell us something about that podcast, even though if you didn't finish um, that activity, so probably you get something from, from that, at least the idea about what they were talking about. Yes, um, the name of the podcast was Hold Me, I'm Scared. Mm -hmm. And in the podcast, uh, talk about fears. Mm -hmm. And in the first episode, uh, talk about aviophobia and it's a, when a, a person have a fear to fly oh. and they have statistics about the accidents and statistics about the people who is scared fly mm -hmm. and um, ah, and share her person, their personal uh, experience. Mm -hmm. But the 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 uh, presentador, ¿cómo se dice? Mm -hmm. uh, tell that uh, don't have. This is girl, but no people who who have this phobia. Oh, okay, okay, good, good information. Uh, what is the name of that phobia? And the podcast? No, uh, no, the phobia. The, the, you mentioned uh, uh, something. Mm -hmm. uh, they say aviophobia. Aviof. Oh, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to read about that because I never listened to that before. Okay, thank you for sharing that information. Um, thank you, Alicia. Okay, so um, anyone else wants to participate? Telling us um, about the podcast that probably you listened or now here. Mm -hmm. um, Cecilia. Cecilia, you need to turn on your microphone. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I have problems. Okay, no, no uh, I... Okay, I hear, mm -hmm. uh, I hear one podcast about politics. Oh, okay. Uh, it, Go ahead. Yeah, it, it was about uh, the Cold War. Uh, oh. mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, United States and uh, Russia. Well, no. well you of course, in are that moment. the first. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, okay, it's about two, two countries. Um, um, countries with power, uh, I don't know how to say it, potencias. Um, yes, potential. country with, with um, enough power, to, um, well, power to say. I'm gonna look for it, because even though I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to say that. Uh, let me just... Okay, continue. Um, it's going to be power, ah, I guess. Okay. Potency, that's um, another way. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> colors forward. Okay, um, creo que diré Rusia para no decir la Unión Soviética. <laughs> okay, es un poco más difícil. Okay, uh, Russia, eh, they want to. I don't know. Uh, they want to to be the the first, the first and all about mm -hmm. their economic, uh, their politic, their socially. For example, um, the communist, communism, 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 communism. Okay, um. This uh, country, uh, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, don't, don't worry. Don't history. worry. Just try to say what you learned in, in that podcast. Okay. Use your vocabulary. Okay. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, maybe I don't know. I am very embarrassed. <laughs> Come on, we we are here. Uh, we know each other here. You don't have to be like that, okay? Just okay. read and uh, okay, think the, the the ideas that you're going to say. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay. Um. Um. Short the 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 uh, this podcast is about they are. Two countries competing for power. Mm -hmm. Practically, Cecilia. Yes. Okay. Okay, Cecilia. Good. Thank you for sharing that information with us. That's an interesting topic because, uh, well, we saw two different countries. In, in that moment, what's called yours, uh, with uh, against the United States, they were like, as you said, and as you mentioned before, the way competing to be the first one in everything. Uh, well, basically, they were like innovating with technology, uh, with um, uh, weapons, and many things. Uh, that that moment, uh, they were like uh, rushing, to, uh, trying to create new things, not things in order to defeat the other one. Okay, even though they were not attacking each other, but they were like uh, that, that's the name of uh, of the uh, of the war, the Cold War, because they were not attacking each other, but they were trying running to um, be the first one in everything. Okay, as ah, so you mentioned yeah, about that. Um, let me see. Someone else who wants to participate with the podcast? Anyone else? Okay, I guess nobody else. Hey, I will be asking you tomorrow again about the podcast. Probably you want to practice a little bit um, your vocabulary here in the video conference. Remember, this activity is just to bring, to bring practice um, listening and, and also speaking. Uh, that's the reason of, of this activity. Okay, um, right now we are going to move um, to, well, first the exercises that we had to develop here in the platform of English Corporative and also um, the topic that we're going to be developing. Uh, yeah, give me just one moment while I share my screen here.
Okay, here we have. Um, it, well, we are in section number two right now. Yesterday, we were discussing about the uses of germs and also uh, the infinitives. Uh, well, I left an activity, uh, I left a link where you were going to practice the uses of uh, germs and infinitive. Um, and also, um, I told you yesterday that uh, today we're going to have an activity about pronunciation. Um, I have a list of some uh, words that you need to identify it, uh, what is like um, the, the stress uh, on those words, okay? Um, do you story about stress? Do you watch this video? Yes, no. Mm -hmm. I heard about the stress, but I don't see the video. You didn't, uh -huh. you didn't watch the video. Okay. Um, don't worry about that. We're going to um, work on it um, today. Okay. Um, I will be showing you some, uh, well, I'm going to change the, my stream to so I, I need to use why. Give me a moment. Okay, can you see the whiteboard there? Yes? No? Yes. 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 Okay, yes. I'm going to write here some words and I want you to pronounce um, those words and I want you also to identify what it were in, in that word is the stress, okay? Um, let's start with, uh, I'm going to name you because I'm going to point it out some, someone. Uh, for instance, um, the first one that I have here is Maximo Arteaga. Okay, sir, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay, look at this word and tell me how uh, you pronounce this word, okay? Can you see the word? Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Undertake. Okay, undertake, very good. So um, where is the stress in that work? Under. Undertake. In, in under. In under, okay. Um, uh, how many syllables do we have in this word? Two syllables. Mm -hmm. Two syllables. Two syllables. Uh, let's, stay, let, let's take a look at this work. Under. The first one, the first one is under. The second one is take. Okay. Uh, well, in this case, we have three syllables. The first one is on. The second one is dirt, and the third one is take. On. Okay. Dirt. Take. Under. Okay. So. Okay. Where is the stress? You say in under, right? But under. in this case, uh, okay. Take. This case is gonna be in. Under take. Uh huh. What is the stress? On, dirt, or take? On. On, oh, no. okay, very good, excellent, Thank excellent. So the stress in this word is in on because it, it is where we um, highlight the pronunciation. Uh, we uh, use like uh, um, a ton of, uh, uh, an elevated ton of, ton, ton, uh, my apologies, ton of boys, so an elevated Tone of boys. I have some problems to say tone. <laughs> okay. Um, undertake. Uh, let's see the other one. Um, let me see Cecilia. So um, take a look at this word. Okay, there you have. Cecilia, how do you pronounce that word? Yes, yes, sorry, I, I didn't hear you. Um, okay, represent. Represent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me. Uh, what is the stress? Three. Three syllables. Mm -hmm. Three syllables? Re, pre, sin. Yeah. But what is the stress? 
What is that? The stress. What is what? The stress. Uh, yes, uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry, I don't know. Um, like the high uh, tone of voice in a word. Mm, sorry. Mm, okay, Someone... don't, don't worry, don't worry. Um, help me. Mm -hmm. Someone help me, please. Yeah, um, anyone who wants to help her? It will be uh, red. Okay, Marilyn, it's in red. Okay, red percent, represent. Yes, that's correct. So uh, the stress in this word is in, in red. Remember, um, the word, well, yes or word, no. Uh, yes or no, no. Uh, you watch a video about stress. Um, and I will switch to Spanish. Um, el estrés de una palabra en inglés es um, a lo que le llamamos la mayor fuerza de voz. Eh, en nosotros en, en, en español este, tenemos una característica bien peculiar. Usualmente cuando nosotros, este, eh, en algunas palabras, ¿verdad? porque esto depende de la regla gramatical que utilicemos. En algunas palabras, este, nosotros para denotar la mayor fuerza de voz en, en X este, palabra, perdón por redundar ahí, eh, nosotros utilizamos este, algo que le llamamos tilde. ¿sí? Ahora, en inglés no existen tildes. Eh, sin embargo, este, de la misma forma, así como lo hacemos en español, nosotros podemos identificar donde se encuentra la mayor fuerza de voz en las palabras. Esto nos ayuda muchísimo para, este, eh, uno, practicar la pronunciación y, y, y de esa forma, pues, ir corrigiendo algunos detallitos en cuanto este, al um, acento y, y, y la forma de pronunciar palabras. ¿Ok? Eh, y son, digamos, este, este tema es eh, un poco... Eh, mmm, bastante, eh, digamos, uh, general, porque no muestra o, o no nos da gramaticalmente una regla de cómo nosotros debemos eh, utilizar la mayor fuerza de voz en ellas. No es como en español, por ejemplo, que si yo tengo una palabra este, eh, aguda, yo utilizo X regla de drújula, yo utilizo este, eh, reglas y es... Eh, grave, etcétera, etcétera. Hay como una serie de, de reglas gramaticales este, para nosotros darle la mayor fuerza de voz a una palabra. En inglés no existen ese eh, tipo de reglas, al menos este, que nosotros pues, eh, eh, nos aprendamos la pronunciación um, de ellas e identifiquemos dónde se encuentra la mayor fuerza de voz. Ahora, para hacer eso, eh, generalmente ustedes van a encontrar este, en, en, digamos, en eh, páginas web de, de, de fonética este, que para denotar la mayor fuerza de voz ellos utilizan una especie de apostrofe eh, esto mmm, sin ningún sentido gramatical simplemente para denotar dónde se muestra la mayor fuerza de voz eh, y este, se utiliza como ejemplo no como eh, parte del lenguaje este, en este caso inglés ¿sí? no sé si me estoy dando a entender lo que les quiero decir es que en inglés no existen reglas gramaticales para acentuar palabras. Eh, sin embargo, en español sí. ¿Sí? Ahora, ¿qué hacemos nosotros? Entonces, para este, comprender dónde le vamos a dar la mayor fuerza de voz a una palabra, pues, escuchando este, y aprendiéndonos la pronunciación. Realmente la pronunciación viene siendo ya un poco este, inherente a a la, a, este, al aprendizaje del idioma porque ustedes lo van adquiriendo a medida van practicando y eh, escuchando conversaciones en inglés escuchando este, música viendo eh, películas videos, etc. ¿verdad? Bien eh, para continuar veamos si alguien de forma voluntaria este va a ser el último la última, perdón uh, palabra a ver. Aquí está. 
Vamos a escribir esta palabra. Ok. Any volunteer who wants to identify what is the stress in this word? Okay, sir, go ahead. Commercial. Commercial. Me too, teacher. The. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Before, before syllables. Uh, how many? Four syllables, you said. For yeah. commercial. For how many syllables? First, first, we have to identify how many syllables do we have in this word. How many syllables do we have? Three, four, five. Mm -hmm. code, code, the, the force, uh, voices. Ok, ¿cuántas sílabas? Yeah. Primero identifiquemos algo, Miguel. ¿Cuántas sílabas este, tenemos en esta palabra? Uh, for me, four. Four. For me. Mm -hmm. Ok. For me, just three. Just three. Ok. Mm -hmm. Three. Three. Ok. Well, in this case, we have three sílabas. Con, mer, Show. Okay, commercial. What is the stress in this word? Mer. Okay, in mer. Very good. Commercial. That that's the, the, the moment where we um elevate or turn up voice in, in mer. Commercial. If we want to uh, just identify with using um, diagrams, we can say like something we start with a lean lined and we elevate or turn up boy like con mer show okay something like that um this is a little bit different if we say represent so we'll start uh, with rep present the same happens with undertake on undertake okay so if we want to do just some diagrams in order to identify that but also can use like a uh, circles, like in order to identify each syllable, like represent like this, this, and this. Same happen here. It's gonna be a small, big one, or and a small. Okay. Commercial, represent, and undertake. There we have three different words. This is the way that we use um, in order to identify that. So just take a uh, take it uh, as as uh, an example, okay? In order to complete um, the activities that you have on the platform, I'm going to clear all drawings and I'm going to close this part. Also, I'm going to share my screen right now because we have to move to the next step. Take a look of this part, okay? Um, we have uh, a list of objectives that we're going to find in 2.5. Um, and it says, in this session, you will practice conversation about using a cell phone, see imperatives and infinitive or um, giving suggestions in context, okay? So there you have the uh, objective that we are going to be uh, having for uh, tonight class, okay? Uh, we're going to pay attention uh, to this video later on. We're going to be practicing also. Uh, we're going to be discussing about these, uh, the uses of imperatives. Uh, by the way, do you know what um, an imperative is? You know what is an imperative? It's an order. It's an order, yes. It's a command if you want to call it in a, in a different way. Is a command that we're going to um, give to someone else. And it's supposed that if we give it a command or order, so that person has to do uh, what we are saying because there is no uh, way in order uh, to listen for a response. We are just saying what we want, like open the door, like uh, close a, your computer, so things like orders like commands that the other person has to do even though if he or she is agree or not i mean if, if she or he agreed or not just pay attention to this part and then we're going to discuss about the imperatives <laughs> Oh, 
Are you listening the audio? No, no teacher. No. No. Okay. okay. Let me try the Okay. Hi again. What about now? Yes. 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 Okay. Right. Pay attention. Listen to the audio program. Please pay attention because at the end of the conversation, I will ask you some questions. Get ready. Listen and practice. Can I borrow your phone to call my boss? I can't believe you still don't have a cell phone. Here you go. Thanks. Now, what do I need to do? First of all, be sure to turn it on. And don't forget to dial the area code. Okay, I can see the number, but I can't hear anything. That's because you haven't pressed the call button. Oh, good. It's ringing. Try not to get too excited. You'll probably get his voicemail. Hi, this is Joe Jones. You're right. It's a recording. Sorry, right Make sure to hit the end button, or else you'll leave our conversation on his voicemail. Ready? Who owns the phone? Who are they calling? What's the first thing to do? What should the woman press? If you're not sure about the answers, you may listen to the audio program as many times as you need to. Good luck. Okay, uh, we're going to do this activity because it, it's about listening and practicing all listening. Um, as many times press. Um, we're going to, give me just one moment, please. Let me see if I can just check it out here. This one. They calling. What's the? F okay, here. We're going to be answering each question uh, that she's going to be telling us. Okay, listen carefully to the first question. Ready? Who owns the phone? Okay. Who owns the phone? Okay. Who owns the phone? The girl. Hmm? The boy. Mm -hmm. The boy. Okay. Who wants the phone? The boy. Okay, good. But uh, the boy has a name. You didn't uh, get out that? Richard. Richard. Okay, good. Um, moment. Okay, let's do it this way. Uh, listen the second um, question. Okay. Who are they calling? Who are they calling? The boss. The boss, okay. Her boss, yeah. her boss, her boss. Oh, her boss, the boss of the girl, okay. Her good. boss. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pay attention to the question number three. What's the first thing to do? Okay. Turn, turn on. The cell phone. Mm -hmm. Type the cell phone number. Okay. Good. What should the woman press? Mm -hmm. What should the woman press? Hot area. Mm, or, okay, your coat. Good. If you're not sure about. Okay, I guess uh, um, those are all the questions that we have here to, um, related to this conversation just pay attention to th this part um here we have some instructions on uh commands or um suggestions that we have uh, let me just expand the conversation i guess it's gonna be better if we use it like this i guess it's not going um, to as many times as um, as many times as you need to good luck it's at the end of the conversation now okay, i guess that's gonna be like what do i need to do first of all be sure to turn it on um, i guess it's not possible to soon this part can you read this this conversation yes teacher. yes oh, okay good because uh, for me it's hard to read that conversation but no, well if you can read that that's going to be um yeah, okay, okay, good. Um, so there we have some questions like the first one. Can I borrow your phone to call uh, my boss? 
That's something that Jenny says. Um, and Richard answered, I can't believe you still don't have a cell phone. Okay, and here you go. This, since in this part, when after uh, Jenny said, thanks you, thank you, I mean, thanks, um, uh, we want to start listening about the commands or the imperatives. Imperatives are like uh, suggestions, orders, commands that we give to uh, someone else. For instance, the first one, can you identify what is the first command? Or in this case, I wanna call it a lot like it is. Uh, can you identify the first imperative in this conversation? Be sure. Mm -hmm. Be sure to turn it on, okay? That's gonna be the first imperative. Okay, the second one. The second one. Can you identify uh, the second try, imperative? Try not. Try not to get too excited. Mm, try not. Okay. Try not. But there is another one. There is another one. Before that. For me, it would be where he said, "Don't forget to dial." The uh, yeah, code. that's that's the second imperative. Don't forget to dial to dial the area code. Uh, the third one. Okay, uh, like, like the one you say. Uh, try not. Sir, try not, Maximo. You say, try not to get too excited. Okay, so there we have the, in the last one. Make sure. Make sure to hit the end button. Okay, there we have a, the, a, what we call imperatives. Imperatives are a, like that, okay? Will be like commands, orders, and suggestions, or things to do, or things that the other person has to do. Okay, just listening or instructions. Uh, we're going to discuss more about imperatives in the next video. Um, here we have the lesson adjectives, and it says at the end of this session, we'll, uh, you will understand how to use imperatives and infinitives to uh, for giving suggestions. Um, here, um, the woman is going to uh, discuss and tell you. Um, about the uses of imperatives and also uses of um, uh, infinitive words, okay? Just pay attention, then I want to um, explain a little bit more about the uses of imperative. And I'll give me, I will be giving you some other uh, uses of it, okay? So pay attention to this part. Hello everyone, before you watch the video, I want to remind you that imperatives are commands and they don't need a subject. Also, for giving suggestions, we will use an imperative as well as an infinitive. Stay around for more explanation. Imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. Be sure to turn it on. Don't forget to dial the area code. Make sure to hit the end button. Remember to pay the bill every month. Try not to talk for too long. This is how we'll use imperatives and infinitives for giving suggestions. When using an imperative, the subject is never mentioned and they always begin with a verb. And as said on the previous explanation, the infinitive is to plus a verb. Now let's think about a situation. These two kids are new to their English class and they say, we don't understand English. So let's give them a suggestion. We can say, study your verbs. But this sounds more like an instruction. So to make it a bit more polite and to actually sound like a suggestion, we may add, make sure to study your verbs. Check at the beginning we have no subject and then a verb, which means it's an imperative. Make sure. Moving forward to our infinitive to study. So when we put an imperative with an infinitive together, we can come up with a great suggestion. We will leave you now with some common expressions we use as imperatives to give suggestions. Be sure, make sure, don't forget, remember, try. Let's make examples using these expressions. Be sure to practice with your friends. Make sure to use a dictionary. Don't forget to think in English. Remember to do your English homework. Try to pronounce properly. Now read these suggestions. Be sure, 
to speaking your native language. Make sure to forget your dictionary. Don't forget to stay quiet in class. Remember to translate into your native language. Try to mispronounce the words. You will agree with me that they are not good suggestions to give an English student. Therefore, we need to add the word not to make them positive suggestions. So the word not will go between the imperative and the infinitive. Now it is your turn. Ready to come up with examples of your own? Try it and write them on the infinitive. Is okay, uh, we're going to keep in, the, in this part because it is so important to explain um, this. Okay, um, remember that infinitives, and this is something that we discussed previously in the, in the previous classes. Um, so infinitives are verbs that start with to, with the preposition to, okay? So uh, infinitives doesn't have a specific time. They are not in past, present, or future, okay? They are standard verbs, like uh, the ones that we have in Spanish, like correr, reír, bailar. So they are, they, they, uh, this kind of verbs um, do not have like a specific time. They, they, oh, we can say that these kind of verbs are not conjugated into um, a specific pronouns or nouns, okay? So um, when we're going to use um, a, the, this kind of phrases, the imperatives, it usually um, commands or uh, orders some like unpolite because we are requesting to someone uh, to do something for us, okay? We say, uh, do you homework? We are giving an order to someone. Or if we say like, um, uh, open the door, okay? We are just using um, the imperative form. We are giving an order, we are giving a command. Okay, but there is a way in order to um, use imperatives, but also so in this, this kind of uh, expressions like commands and orders, but, but also in, in a polite way. And um, in order to do that, we can use some expressions like the one that we have here. Uh, be sure, to, okay, don't uh, make, and well, here we have the list at the end. Um, in order to practice, like be sure, make sure, don't forget, remember, or try. If we use this kind of uh, words at the beginning, we can use infinitive words, okay? In that way, we are saying something or we are suggesting something to do in a polite way. Even uh, this is um, uh, so good for, for, for instance, when you don't know the person uh, uh, that you're talking about because commands, uh, as I said before, are commands, something that they had to do for you. So you're not going to say to a strange person uh, uh, the, the, this kind of uh, imperative words. If we say like, hey, you open uh, the door. Hey, you uh, close the door. Why? Because probably they are going to get mad with you, uh, mostly because you don't know them and uh, you probably don't have a good relation with them in order to be requesting something uh, for you, okay? So uh, if we don't know that person, we can use commands also, but in a polite way. In this case, it's including words like, be sure to close the door, please, okay? Be sure to open the door, please. Be sure to um, do your homework, okay, please. So we're saying things, we're giving commands, we're giving suggestions in order to do something, but in a polite way, that, that's how it's worked. And also it says here that we can use negative suggestions in order to uh, give a positive suggestions. Uh, I mean, um, negative expressions in order to give a positive suggestions, okay? Like be sure not, it's a negative expression, but we are saying, a, a positive, uh, I mean, it, the, we're saying a negative expression, but we are using a positive suggestion. Like, be sure not to speak in your native language. Okay, if you uh, check it out, all the sentence here, uh, this, is a, this is an imperative in negative form, okay? But we are not, some, we are not saying something bad, we're saying, something good for uh, for some cases like an advice that we are going 
that we are given to, to, to someone, okay? Um, and, uh, and also, uh, if you remember at the beginning, um, in, in the structure of this kind of um, if phrases using imperatives and infinitives, uh, we have to remember that uh, when we use imperatives, we're going to start always with a verb. Uh, she says that we don't have to use uh, the, the subject, okay? Because it is not used, it, it is not used in, in, in this kind of uh, phrases, but uh, they have a subject. This is an implicit subject. Okay, what is that subject if we are using imperatives? The pronoun. Mm, okay, yeah, we're using a pronoun in, in order to use imperative, but we are not uh, pronouncing the pronoun, okay? Uh, because uh, we say it, uh, an imperative phrase, um, in this case, it's like in Spanish, um, eh, abre la puerta, este, cierra eh, el closet, okay? Eh, guarda los alimentos en el refrigerador. Ahora, no estamos utilizando nosotros este, un, un sujeto. El sujeto eh, se encuentra tacit, se encuentra um, eh, tácito, ¿sí? Ahora, ese sujeto, este, al que nosotros nos referimos en esas expresiones, eh, si nos tocara identificarlo, ¿hacia quién nos referimos? Y nos, referimos nos referimos al pronombre you. ¿Por qué you? Porque estamos dando una, este, eh, un comando directo a otra persona. ¿sí? Se sobreentiende eh, por el hecho de ser un imperativo hacia quién nosotros estamos transmitiendo el mensaje. Ahora, eh, pero el sujeto está tácito y a pesar de estar tácito sí tiene un sujeto ok, no sé si me doy a entender yes teacher sí, bueno, excelente ok, so we're going to um, eh, just move to the next part because we have to develop uh, some eh, exercises here and um, I have some expressions uh, about imperatives that you can use uh, and you can include to your vocabulary. Just give me a moment and I will share to you the link. Um, give me a moment, okay. Okay, there you have. Okay, do you open the link? No? Yes. Okay, good. So um, there you have some verbs that we can use um, in order to uh, start with a, an imperative uh, instruction, okay? 
uh, or suggestions, if one to call it in that way, all those verbs are the ones that, are, well, yes, <laughs> most of these verbs are the ones that we use uh, with expressions like uh, make sure to or um, uh, be ready, things like that, okay? So you remember it, um, there we have a list for, for, the, for the uses of this kind of um, imperative forms. Okay, I guess I, I can't fuse the limits here or not. No. Oh, it's okay. Okay, um, do you have a list of, uh, I'm going to show you my screen part of my screen. Uh, let me just use this bottom, last portion of screen we have. And this is the link, I mean the list. Okay, can you see the list of imperative words? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, the, these kind of words are not only uh, for um, giving orders, it is also for giving instructions. For instance, um, you're going to find this kind of words in books well, what, um, where you're going to find uh, some directions in order to complete any activity. For instance, a, an instructions could say like answer the following questions according to the information that you have read uh, in the text, okay? There, we are using a command. So we're using, um, a, well, in this case, in, well, as the name of it, uh, imperatives, right? Because uh, the person who write or uh, did the exercises, they need to specify what we have to do in that uh, activity. So they need to uh, start uh, or uh, write um, an imperative expression in order to, to uh, let uh, the reader know that uh, they had to complete something in a specific way, okay? There are some other instructions like the ones that we use in class or probably uh, at work, like ask your classmate, uh, ask your coworker uh, something, et cetera, et cetera, okay? change uh, something from a uh, export, okay? So uh, clean uh, your desk, do something, okay? Finish uh, your uh, homework or um, your work, okay? Before X hours, okay? Um, all, this, all these words, we're going to use it uh, for um, oh, oh. it's going to be included in, in a um, imperative form uh, because there are we start with this a uh, kind of um, um, words words in this case um, instructions that we want or someone else want uh, uh, that we can uh, do in any specific context okay so. Uh, and also there you have a word search. I guess it's not working because I, I was trying to to solve this this word search, but it's not working. It's not like the ones that I, I share sometimes to you word search. Well, I don't know why, but it's not working. When I was trying to do it in, in my my cell phone, it was working, uh, but right now it's not possible to underline this kind of words here. So, um, but if you cannot uh, complete this activity, uh, what you can do here is just take note of this uh, bird in order to um, uh, write some uh, phrases, uh, this key imperative phrases in English. Okay, because we're going to use it for the next activity that we're going to do um, in a moment. Okay, so take note of this or take a screenshot or a photo if you want. Okay.
Okay, I'm going to stop sharing right now and let's move on to the next activity. Um, you're going to uh, be practicing um, <laughs> writing in English because um, you're going to create three sentences using imperatives, the, the imperatives that we have here in, in, in the video. Um, if, if you want, I can just share my screen to you and show the uh, imperatives. And be sure, make sure, don't forget, remember and try, okay? What we're going to do is to create three different sentences using the imperative plus uh, the infinitive verbs that we have in this exercise, okay? You're going to include the imperative plus the verb plus a complement. Do not use the same complement that we have here in this kind of sentences, okay? Try to include a, a different one, okay? Is it clear what we're going to do? After you finish uh, to write a, or to create your three sentences, um, you can send it here to the chat box in Zoom. It's not necessary to share that information in the WhatsApp group, okay? So you can share it directly here in the uh, chat box in Zoom. Is it clear what we're going to do? Uh, Victoria? Uh, teacher, what we are going to do, uh, I don't understand very well that you told us. Okay, you are going to create three different sentences using the imperatives that we have here in, in the screen. Uh, be sure, make sure, don't forget, remember, with uh, infinite verbs, like in order to uh, create a polite sentence. Uh, with an, a, a context, okay? So in this case, you're going to include a complement to that sentence. Like for instance, I can use to be sure to answer your exam, okay? Or uh, make sure to clean the house before uh, leaving, something like that, okay? Three different sentences using imperatives plus a infinity verbs. Is it clear now? Yes, teacher. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. So, does anyone has any other uh, question? Any other doubt? Ah, oh, Maximo is answering, is completing this activity. Be sure to open the door. Be sure to clean the desk. Okay, and don't forget to write the letter. Okay, good, excellent. Um, it, I'm going to switch to Spanish, okay? You know, to explain this part. Um, cuando nosotros utilizamos el be sure, make sure, uh, don't forget, remember, or try, eh, es simplemente para hacer nuestra oración un poco más eh, polite, o sea, más amigable este, al oído de, de, de la otra persona. Sin embargo, la, este, el imperativo, la, 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 la acción que nosotros estamos solicitando, la sugerencia que nosotros estamos haciendo, este, está eh, implícita en la oración que nosotros estamos creando. ¿Cuál sería en este caso la indicación? Si yo digo, bueno, en el caso del ejemplo de Máximo, dice, be sure to open the door. ¿Okay? ¿Cuál es la este, frase imperativa dentro de esta, de, dentro de esta este, frase, <ríe> digamos. Es, este, ok, repeating the same phrase and phrase, right? But I guess you get it. ¿Cuál sería el, el imperativo de esta frase? Open the door. To open, open the door, ok. En la segunda sería... Clean the desk. En la tercera sería write the letter. Write the letter. ¿Sí? Esas son este, frases imperativas. Sin embargo, al utilizar nosotros este, palabras como be sure, make sure, don't forget, eh, a pesar de que tenemos esas frases dentro este, de la oración, eh, 
este, nosotros hacemos nuestra indicación un poco más amigable, como les decía en, en un principio. ¿Sí? No se escucha tan pesado. Dígame. Can I use at the end of the sentence the word please? Yes, you can do it in order to request something. Si usted quiere be solicitar. Uh -huh. Be sure to open the door, please. Please. Okay. You have to use a comment, please, if you are going to write it there. Um, and, and it is possible to do it in that way. In, in some more polite, even in that, well, in this case. Um, so if, if you use the, the word please at the end of this kind of phrases. See? Es posible. ¿Alguien más? ¿Tiene alguna pregunta, duda, sugerencia? Bueno, este, eh, ahorita vamos iniciando la segunda semana. Este, sí me gustaría eh, eh, hacer una pequeña revisión. A mí me gusta hacer revisiones en cuanto a las clases. Este, eh, de momento, ¿cómo vamos? ¿Creen? Eh, que estamos aprendiendo este, un poco, consideren que hay que cambiar algo en las clases, eh, quieren incluir este, algún tipo de actividades ustedes, eh, consideran que estoy hablando mucho. Este, sí me gusta hacer este, este tipo de revisiones para, para ver si hacemos algún ajuste y, 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 y tratar pues, de facilitar el proceso de aprendizaje. Así que este, ustedes díganme, vamos bien, vamos mal. ¿Qué me dicen ustedes? A ver, los escucho. It's okay. It's okay. Ah, okay. Any other comment? Anyone else has any other comment? Um Everything is okay, uh, but I would like to have a comment if I'm, if I'm not, uh, just give me a second because my, my dog. Yeah, I'm sorry, oh. I, I didn't get the last part. What do you say? Because there, there is like something, like, like a sound in, in your mouth. Yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry. My dog. My dog. Oh, okay. I would like to have a... Um, I would like to have a, for example, if I'm not, if I'm not in the, um, if I'm saying something and I have a bad um, uh, pronounce, pronunciation, I'm sorry. Mistake in uh, pronunciation. Like that. I guess that's mm -hmm. what you want to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will it will I do it if if you try to let us know that we are wrong. Oh, okay, you want a feedback? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. that, that's good. And, and, and okay, um, I will do it. Okay, don't worry, I will do it. Because uh, also in that way we are going to be um like uh, learning a little bit uh, in this case of, of the pronunciation of words. Okay, mm -hmm. so good. Thank you for letting me know that. Any anything else? Teacher, in your case, mm -hmm. I need to feedback in the topic the Jerome's. Mm, okay, feedback. Uh, you mean uh, the previous? Más que todo, mm -hmm. más okay, que todo con la actividad que dejó. Oh, la actividad no la... Eh, se refiere al enlace este del el, el, el worship que yo les compartí. Sí tendió a confundirme y no lo comprendí mucho. Tal vez si sí puede hacer tiempo y lo podamos resolver para yo entenderlo. Sí, por supuesto. Vamos a hacer tiempo para este, eh, contestar ese, eh, ese worship. Lo único que este, no hoy, sino el día de mañana. Porque okay. este, luego tengo, luego dentro de unos minutos tengo otra clase. Este, sí, okay. Así que el día de mañana hacemos un espacio y yo con todo gusto les explico acerca de los infinitives y los gerunds, ¿ok? Y, y okay. resolvemos okay. en la clase este, el, la worship, ¿ok? Ok, perfecto, gracias. Muy bien, excelente. Eh, ¿Alguien más? ¿Otro comentario? Uh, I have the same opinion that the... 
de, uh, del compañero anterior. Ok, you, you want a feedback about the, the last time, ok? It's just the journal thing. Ok, good, excellent. I will do it. Anyone else? Okay. I, I get that so for today, right? So, um, if, if I, I will switch to Spanish. Si en algún momento este, ustedes sienten um, la clase aburrida, este, que no estamos aprendiendo nada, este, siéntanse con toda la libertad este, de decirme, mire, este, eh, cierra la videoconferencia y vaya, si usted no nos está enseñando nada. <risa> ok, este, porque sí, a mí me interesa que, que ustedes eh, eh, sí lleven algo este, de, de estos temas pues, que están propuestos en la plataforma de... de de inglés corporativo y sí me gusta pues que este, mis estudiantes uh, por lo menos eh, logren retener este algo de lo que de lo que nosotros vemos aquí sí eh, yo estoy con toda la disposición de ayudarles este guiarlos eh, contestar sus dudas si las tienen y sí me gusta que este tengamos esa comunicación eh, que si existe algún problema con la plataforma, que con algún ejercicio, con un tema que no entendamos, háganmelo saber. Y yo con todo gusto este, busco una estrategia, eh, una estrategia diferente para poderles enseñar este X tema. Y este, eh, de la misma forma, si consideran que este, estoy presionando con muchas actividades, este, háganmelo saber ¿sí? y le mermamos un poquito. Esto es para no saturarlo, no significa que no vamos a hacer actividades, pero solamente es para no, no saturarlo. No tenemos mucho. <ríe> no Teacher. tenemos mucho. <ríe> no. Vaya, entonces vamos Teacher. a aumentar las actividades. <ríe> Dígame. Sí, <ríe> tenemos, sí, tenemos. <ríe> <ríe> Vaya, dígame, Margarita, creo que usted quiere comentar algo. Sí, correcto. Buenas noches. Eh... Quizás así con toda la pena del mundo, eh, tal vez que cuando sea alguna regla eh, específica de, de cómo debemos hacer algo o cómo debemos de pronunciarlo o algo, a, a mí me cuesta en muchas ocasiones expresarme en inglés porque hay que, para expresarse hay que pensar en inglés. Y a veces eh, la pena, el desconocimiento o lo que usted quiera eh, me cuesta un poco. También a veces eh, la fluidez que usted tiene es eh, súper chivo, pero a veces me quedo corta y eso me causa hasta cierto punto frustración y siento oh. que, que no sé si ya no puedo o, 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 o tiro la toalla o, o sigo y, y voy no. a ver qué, qué, qué termino consiguiendo. Pues, o sea, siendo muy sincera, vea. Sí, no, y, y Margarita, mire, siéntase con toda la confianza. Si yo estoy este, eh, hablando demasiado, como que es carreta o algo, usted dígame, no, tranquilo, pare, este, explíquenos en español. No, ¿sí? eso no es el problema, <risa> que, pero, pero no, hay ciertas pero, pero cosas si que, que, que a mí que me yo... cuestan. Sí, yo sé, pero hay ciertas cosas que, que, que sí las capto y hay otras que no. Por ejemplo, cuando son algo, algunas reglas específicas de traducción, de lenguaje, de escritura, de pronunciación. Entonces, ahí como que tal vez, no sé lo, el resto de los compañeros, pero a mí sí me gustaría que tal vez eh, lo explique en inglés dos, tres veces, pero también una vez en español para poder captar la idea y ya que lo demás se nos sea más fácil. Uh -huh. Excelente, sí, me parece, me parece muy bien. Y voy a tomar su palabra, ¿sí? Este, vamos a tratar cuando sean este, cosas gramaticales, eh, reglas, en este caso, eh, eh, explicarlas un poquito mejor. Eh, dígame. ¿Alguien quería hablar? ¿No? Bueno, entonces voy a tomar su palabra, este, Margarita. Así que, eh, con todo gusto, y como les digo, yo estoy en la disposición para ayudarles. Eh, Oscar, veo que tiene la mano levantada. ¿Algún comentario? Sí, teacher, referente a lo que lo voy a decir en español, ¿verdad? Sí, no, no hay problema. <risa> Igual que las compañeras, pues, es eh, lógico, lógico, ¿verdad? Que estamos como que a veces no entendemos muchas cosas, 